The Significance of Rivers in the Bible, Part 2. The river of God is the other river that runs through history. God's river originally started in the Garden of Eden and watered the garden. After the fall of Adam and Eve, the river of God's purposes slowed to a trickle as evil grew upon the earth. As time went by, the corruption on the earth increased. About 1500 years after the fall, God spoke to Noah about the state of the earth. Genesis chapter 6, verse 12 to 13. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. It seems that everything had become corrupted apart from Noah and his family. Even after the flood, wickedness remained among the people, and the line of righteousness seemed to all but peter out. Only with Abraham and his descendants did it revive. Since the flood, the literal river that has most represented the river of God is the Jordan River. The Jordan is only a small river. It's not particularly wide or deep, and it's not used for navigation as it doesn't go anywhere apart from the Dead Sea. In the Old Testament, the commander of the army of Aram, Naaman, suffered from leprosy and sought a cure from the prophet Elisha. He was told to wash himself seven times in the river Jordan. Naaman was insulted by this, as he regarded the Jordan as insignificant. 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 12 Are not Abana and Farpa rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May not I wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. He was eventually persuaded to change his mind and he got healed. But the story serves to show how the Jordan, as a symbol of, thing, of the things of God, was despised by worldly people. So the Jordan River seems quite small and insignificant looking compared to other rivers, such as the mighty river Euphrates, which is a river that Babylon was built on. This is really a picture of how the things of God can seem weak compared to the things of the world. However, the Jordan River has a great future ahead of it, whereas the Euphrates will eventually dry up. At the moment, the Jordan flows into the Dead Sea, which has no life in it and has no outlet to the ocean. It is the lowest point on Earth. However, in the millennial period, when Christ rules on Earth, waters will spring from the temple in Jerusalem and flow east into the Araba, the Dead Sea Basin. Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 8 Then said he unto me, these waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. Everywhere the waters will bring life to a place that formerly had no life. Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 9 And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth which moveth Whithersoever the rivers shall come shall live, and there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and everything shall live whither the river cometh. The river will bring new life, and also along its banks will be trees that seem to produce edible fruit every month, and leaves that can be used medicinally for healing. Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 12 and by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. He shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. Ultimately, the river of God is eternal and will flow from God's throne in the new Jerusalem, 
the river will, the river will actually flow through the middle of the tree of life. Revelation chapter 22 verse 1 to 2 And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. The river contains the water of life, carrying out life from the throne of God. Looking at the whole picture, we can see how God's river started as a mighty river in the Garden of Eden. It became small and despised during the 6,000 years of human history. In the millennium, it will be restored to greatness, and in the new Jerusalem, it will achieve its amazing eternal fullness. Similarly, Jesus was despised and rejected when he was on earth. He will return in power and majesty. Do not reject Christianity, because you may know Christians who are weak and foolish. Every believer has an amazing future ahead. Those who reject Jesus have no future. Thank you for listening. If you found this video interesting, you can find more information at prophecy-workshop.com